Welcome to San Cristobal de las Casas, the most popular magical town in the state of Chiapas. Located just three hours from the Guatemala border, you'll find a unique blend of cultures very different from the rest of Mexico. For example, did you know that the state of Chiapas belonged to Guatemala for a debatable amount of time? San Cristobal has an interesting and complicated history, and I'll be sharing this story throughout the video, so be sure to stick around through the end for some novela quality drama. My name is Jenny, Kevin's behind the camera, and we are Eat Baila Travel. Today's vlog is gonna share seven things to do in San Cristobal, as well as some really cool history about this town. Number one, climb up to the churches for a panoramic view of the city. This is Iglesia de San Cristobalito. It's quite a climb, but the view is great. There's also Iglesia de Guadalupe. I would go all the way up with the view here, midpoint. Awesome. This is a great place to also come to see the sunset behind the mountains. A lot of people gather up here around 5, 6 o'clock, maybe 7, depending on the time that you come. And it's just gorgeous, beautiful. Different from Puerto Escondido, but with the mountains, worth the view. Number two, roam the magical pedestrian streets. There are three main pedestrian streets in San Cris. There's the Miguel Hidalgo, 20 de Noviembre, and Real de Guadalupe. This one here is Miguel Hidalgo. I love the huge variety of restaurants and cafes and like wine. It's the Rincón del Vino, you have foods from all over the world, and Mexican food, of course, regional food. It's such, it's way more tourist oriented than I had expected in like a really good and organized way because I've seen cities and towns that grow into tourism but in a very dysfunctional way and I'm really pleased to see the balance here in San Cris so far. Definitely not what I expected to see in San Cristobal de las Casas. A DJ for a street party. <laughs> I feel like San Cristobal is the kind of place that says, I know I'm awesome, I know what I have to offer, and here it is, in all confidence. We happen to be here during Semana Santa, and we've seen so many cultural events here already. They've transitioned from Semana Santa now to El Dia del Niño, getting ready for the, the Day of the Child, or Kids Day, and they've got a stage set up with toys, theme, performances throughout the week. And of course, people in costumes representing their culture. It's a beautiful park and a place to just hang out. Speaking of cultural events, there's live music. And it's marimba. We just put up a vlog on marimba music, so if you're not sure what that is, be sure to check out our vlog on marimba, the sounds of Chiapas. My favorite of the pedestrian streets is Real de Guadalupe because you have the beautiful view of the church right all the way through.
When the Spanish arrived in the 16th century, they found most of the indigenous nations divided into Mayan and non-Mayan peoples, with the non-Mayans being mostly Soques and the Chiapas. So here's where this story begins. Conquistador Hernán Cortés sends one of his military guys to the region, today known as Chiapas, right after they subdue the Aztec Empire. Long story short, the first guy he sent fails due to fierce resistance from the Tzotziles peoples in the highlands. The second guy he sends is named Diego Mazariegos. Mazariegos had much more success than the first guy, but many natives preferred to commit suicide than to subdue to the Spanish. One famous example of this is the Battle of Tepechia, where many jumped to their deaths in the Sumidero Canyon. Over time, indigenous resistance was weakened due to warfare with the Spanish and disease. The two main groups of the Central Highlands, the Tzotziles and the Tzetziles, were the first to be subdued enough to establish the first Spanish city, today known as San Cristobal de las Casas. Number three, enjoy a cup of coffee or hot chocolate. If you're in Chiapas, coffee here is unmissable, and I am a huge coffee lover, so I've gone to so many different places to try the coffee. Uh, this Cafelogia is one of, uh, one of the coolest places because it has almost a museum inside. Uh, but I have a preference and my place is Yi Cafe. I'll take you soon. But if you're in San Cristobal de las Casas or Tuxla, make sure you take advantage of all the organic and delicious coffee that Chiapas produces. coffee like my steaks medium roasted not too dark roast just right in the middle and this place roast those coffee these coffee beans perfectly Oof. it has a very like cherry flavor type like of the coffee flavor it doesn't have like that nasty roast coffee uh, like burnt taste this is why I like it so much um, so if you're in the area and you like your coffee beans lightly to medium roast, come to Yeet Cafe. Also, if you're a big coffee geek or you just like to learn stuff in general, I highly recommend our friend La Carentita's vlog about the, how the coffee from Chiapas came to be known around the world thanks to one particular super badass indigenous woman. And so what I got, my guess is what I got, so creamy. Mm. So I got a hot chocolate, but it's 90% organic cacao and just 10% panela, which is sugar. And then of course a tiny bit of lactose-free milk. I love that lactose-free milk is an option in a lot of Mexico, usually at no additional charge. Number four, explore the nearby parks, caverns, and grottos. There are several nature parks around San Cristobal for hikes and walks. We visited Arcotete Eco Park and 10 out of 10 recommend. This place was amazing and unlike any caverns we've ever seen before. To see the full footage of our Arcotete visit, you can join our Patreon membership where we share exclusive content with our Eat Baila travel members. From the colonial period, Chiapas was relatively isolated from both colonial authorities in Mexico City and authorities in Guatemala. One big reason was that it, there was rugged terrain and it was hard to reach and travel through. Um, and another big reason that it was just not attractive to the Spanish. It lacked mineral wealth and access to open markets. So they were like, eh, they kind of just ignored it. Como ven? Como? Eh. This kind of worked in their favor for a little while because the isolation meant they didn't have as many battles during the fight for independence and it had slightly less of an impact on its native population compared to the rest of Mexico. Today, Chiapas is one of the Mexican states with the most indigenous populations and with the most indigenous languages spoken, like Tzotzil. In San Cristobal, you'll hear much more Tzotzil than you will Spanish. Number five, you can take a day trip to the Sumidero Canyon, one of the most impressive natural landmarks we have ever seen. We took a tour from the city of Tuxla Gutierrez, but there are tours leaving from San Cristobal as well. Check out our vlog on Cañón Sumidero for more info on this excursion. 
Number six, visit one of the many museums in San Cristobal. There are lots of museums in San Cristobal, but the one that you absolutely don't want to miss is Steps in San Cristobal. Welcome to Steps in San Cristobal. We are a nonprofit organization that care about children's education. We work with the indigenous communities around the city, and also uh, we try to each kid to learn how to read and write in Spanish, but also uh, using their culture. STEPS is a nonprofit and non-governmental organization that is dedicated to the education of children in indigenous communities. They offer workshops and activities, telling stories and legends to learn about the indigenous cultures here in the area of Chiapas. We go to the communities and record the stories, uh, the original stories uh, from the communities and then turn them into books. And so then we go back to the communities and teach the kids how to um, read and write in their, uh, with using their culture. In the morning we have the cooking workshop uh, in which you learn how to make uh, tortillas, quesadillas and a traditional drink, which is pozol. Then we have a, a story time at 3 p.m., which is in Spanish. We tell you a, a story from the community and also the Explic the explication of a traditional uh, ceremony. Then we also have a, another a cooking workshop at night in which you learn how to make uh, tamales and a traditional drink, uh, ponche. We really, really enjoyed everything that we learned here and we highly recommend that you come visit. The activities are free and all they ask is um, a small donation to help carry on the amazing work that they do for children. Uh, we hope to see you here in San Cristobal pretty soon. <laughs> Number seven, take a weekend trip to the Chiflon Waterfalls. Cascadas El Chiflon is an eco park of waterfalls and a river with an incredible turquoise color that is just out of this world. Check out our Chiflon vlog for tips and how to get there from San Cristobal. So here's where things get pretty crazy. Chiapas goes from being the neglected middle child to the kid in the middle of a custody battle. In 1821, numerous cities throughout Chiapas declared its independence from the Spanish Empire. And around the same time, Central America was gaining its independence from the Spanish Empire as well. So now you have the city of San Cristobal in favor of joining Mexico, you have other cities in favor of staying free and sovereign, and then other areas wanting to join Guatemala. Damn, that sounds messy. It is. In 1822, a Mexican elite declared Chiapas a part of Mexico. But a year later, Chiapas declared its independence. And then a few months later, there was a vote that ended in favor of incorporating with Mexico. It was alleged that it was a vote manipulated by the Mexican elites. But wait, it gets messier. It does? The southernmost region of Chiapas, called Soconusco, maintained a neutral status until 1842. This is 20 years later. Until a Mexican general showed up, took over the area, and declared it part of Mexico again. The state of Chiapas was officially declared a state of Mexico in 1824, but Guatemala wouldn't recognize as annexed to Mexico until 70 years later in 1895. So, wild story, huh? We really enjoy learning and we love to share what we learn with you. So don't forget to leave your impressions in the comments down below. And remember that every like, every comment, subscribe and share helps us to continue to grow. So I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon members for their support. Thanks to you, we are able to continue making videos like this. And if you'd like to support and join our Patreon membership, you can do so at this link right here. So that's it for today. Se cuidan, se bañan y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Chao.